Hi, it's Rebecca Sullivan again from Mosul Family Counseling, and tonight we are going to start Chapter 3 of Just One Thing, Developing a Buddha Brain One Simple Practice at a Time by Dr. Rick Hansen. So tonight's chapter is on compassion. I hope you've enjoyed what we've done so far. Again, please let us know any feedback, any experiences you've had, or anything that you'd like to share. So we'll begin. Have compassion for yourself. Life is full of wonderful experiences, but it has its hard parts as well, such as physical and mental discomfort, ranging from subtle to agonizing. This is the realm of suffering broadly defined. When someone you care about suffers, you naturally have compassion. The wish that a being not suffer, usually with a feeling of sympathetic concern. For example, if your child falls and hurts himself, you want him to be out of pain. If you hear that a friend is in the hospital or out of work or going through a divorce, you feel for her and hope everything will be all right. Compassion is in your nature. It's an important part of the neural and psychological systems we evolved to nurture children, bond with mates, and hold together the village it takes to raise a child. You can also have compassion for yourself, which is not self-pity. You're simply recognizing that this is tough, this hurts, and bringing some warm-hearted wish or suffering to lessen or end that you would bring to any dear friend grappling with the same pain, upset, or challenges as you. Studies have shown that self-compassion has many benefits, such as reducing self-criticism, lowering stress hormones like cortisol, increasing self-soothing, self-engagement, and other aspects of resilience, helping to heal any shortages of caring from others in your childhood. And that's a pretty good list. Self-compassion usually takes only a handful of seconds, and then, more centered and heartened, you can get on with doing what you can to make your life better. How? Maybe your back hurts, or you've had a miserable day at work, or someone has barked at you unfairly. Or honestly, maybe you just feel bad, even depressed. Whatever it is, some self-compassion could help. Now what? Self-compassion comes naturally for some people, particularly those who have a well-nurtured childhood. But it's not that easy for a lot of us, especially those who are self-critical, driven, stoic, or think it's self-indulgent to be caring to themselves. So here are steps for calling up self-compassion which you could blend together as self-compassion becomes easier for you. Take a moment to acknowledge your difficulty, your challenges, and suffering. Bring to mind the feeling of being with someone you know cares about you. Perhaps a dear friend, a family member, a spirit, God, even a pet. Let yourself feel that you matter to this being who wants you to feel good and do well in life. Bring to mind your difficulty and imagine that the being cares about you feeling and expressing compassion. Imagine his or her facial expressions, gestures, stance, and attitude toward you. Let yourself receive this compassion, taking in its warmth, concern, and goodwill. Open to feeling more understood and nurtured, more peaceful and settled. The experience of receiving caring primes circuits in your brain to give it. Imagine someone you naturally feel compassion for, perhaps a child or a family member, Imagine how you would feel toward that person if he or she were dealing with whatever it is that's hard for you. Let feelings of compassion fill your mind and body. Extend them towards that person. Perhaps visualized as kind of a light radiating from you, maybe from your heart. Notice what it's like to be compassionate. Now extend the same sense of compassion toward yourself. Perhaps accompany it with words like these, heard softly in the back of your mind. May this pain pass. May things improve for me. May I feel less upset over time. Have some warmth for yourself, some acknowledgement of your own difficulty and pain, some wish for things to get better. Feel this compassion is sinking into you and becoming a part of you, soothing and strengthening you. So that is the end of chapter three. Some of these chapters are a little longer. Some of them are a little shorter. Again, I appreciate you joining us for this journey and let us know anything that you'd like to share with us. Thank you so much.